Hello folks, Jason Cressman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio Beekeeper. Today what I want to do is, I had a question in last week's video and I thought this would be a good opportunity to answer it and maybe I can help out several people at once. So the question last week was, how early in spring do you start your queen rearing? Well this is kind of a loaded question and that's why I thought I would break it down in this video. So before we get started, um, let's go ahead and get the ladybug in here and uh, include her on the conversation. Ladybug! She's not coming. wonder where she is. Oh well, we'll check on her later. What I want to do um, in this series or this video is I'm going to overlap some pictures um, from the past few years that I've taken when I started queen rearing. And maybe that'll help explain things, um, give you uh, something visual to uh, relate to what I'm talking about. And you won't have to stare at my face this whole video. So it's a big plus for everybody. Um, now before we get too far into this video, I do want to mention a couple years ago, I put together a playlist on how to queen rear. In that playlist, I broke it down each step into a different video. Uh, most of the queen rearing uh, videos you find here on YouTube, it's one long 30, 45 minute to an hour video of the whole procedure. So I thought by breaking it down in separate videos, it would make it easier for new beekeepers to understand. You can take one video, go out and apply those steps, and then come back in and watch the second video to learn what you have to do next. So I'll link it up here in the corner. Um, and hopes that maybe it will help one of you out. So um, check it out, JC's Queen Rearing Series. Now another note that I want to make right off the bat, and that is that you're going to need drones present before you can even consider queen rearing. Now usually for me here in Central Ohio, um, that is late February into late March. It really just, it varies. But you want to make sure that your colonies have drones present before you queen rear. Now, what that's going to do, um, by checking your colonies and seeing if you have drones present, it's going to tell you if the other colonies in your area also have drones present. Now, you're going to need these drones in order to get the queens fertilized. Um, an unfertilized queen only lays drones, so that's not very uh, profitable moving forward. So you need to make sure you have drones so your queens get mated, so you have worker bees um, and not just drones. The next thing I want to talk about is how soon in the year I can queen rear. Now what I did was is I used Google Photos um, as a way to back up and keep track of what I do. So for the last four years um, I've taken pictures when I start queen rearing and some of the things involved in queen rearing and I'm going to overlap those here. Um, but what I did was I went back through the last four years and on average I start queen rearing the second week of May with success. Now, that's not to say that you can't do it any sooner because usually in April we are seeing some 50, 60 degree weather. The problem is is those days are spaced far apart. So we might get 50 to 60 degree day on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is in the 30s. So that's how April is. Um, so I have better luck starting in May. Now in May, the weather is still a little bit wishy-washy, uh, up and down. So you do have to be careful on on uh, when you start queen rearing. Now, what I've done the last handful of years is I've went to AccuWeather.com. I enter my zip code and I look at the monthly prediction on the weather. Now, for the most part, this is pretty accurate and it's been a great tool to help me plan out when I'm going to start my queen rearing. Um, I'll look for uh, a group of days, maybe four or five days with nice weather, and that's when I'll start planning to do my first batch of queens. Now on the first nice day, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get out there and make up your cell starter. Um, so you're going to be busting frames apart, you're going to be breaking the hive apart really, so you need decent weather to be able to do that. 
you get your cell starter made up and then you need a following day to have good weather too so you can go out and remove frames of brood from the colonies you want to graft from now it's my experience that the weather is still kind of cool we still got cool winds so what i'll do is i'll grab a frame of brood i'll bring it into my front porch which is closed in but not heated uh, it keeps the direct wind off of the frame and therefore i'm able to graft without chilling any of the brood so after i get my grafting done um, I, as quickly as possible, rush back to the colony and stick the brood frame back where it goes. And I'll take the grafting frame and insert it in the cell starter. Now, the cell starter, it varies for me depending on the time of year. Um, you'll see in my queen rearing series where I talk about the cell starter that um, sometimes I use, and it's usually midsummer or late summer if I'm rearing queens, um, my cell starter, I use a little extension on the bottom. Now what this extension does is it allows me to stick a container in there with water and then I stick a dishcloth inside the container and the bees are able to drink this water while they're contained. Because you see, while they're in the cell starter, they're contained or trapped for 48 hours they're not able to escape so you want to provide them water food and uh, anything else they need which is explained in the queen rearing series well in the early spring um, this extension that I use has a solid bottom in the summer it has a screen bottom to allow more ventilation um, but at early in the year like April or May um, the, the temperatures are just too fluctuating to uh, use the screen bottom. I have better results with the solid bottom board. And I also have good luck taking the cell starter and bringing it in on my front porch. That keeps the uh, direct wind off of the colony, helps the, the bees uh, maintain temperature of those cells, and keeps them from aborting any of those cells because they've chilled or they're not able to keep all of them warm. So bringing the cell starter into my front porch is a huge benefit. So if you've got a shed or a garage or something like that, um, use that um, if you plan to start queen rearing early in the year. Many people ask me, do you use the cell starter to finish your cells or just to start them? Well, starter, cell starter, means that you would use it to start the cells but I have used a cell starter to raise the cells completely all the way through the process and then when I get a, the virgins to emerge that cell starter becomes another colony and it gets one of those virgins. Um, the downside to only using the cell starter is, is you need a mass quantity of nurse bees in there to get a good uh, queen production. Um, those nurse bees secrete royal jelly and it takes a lot of royal jelly to make quality queens. Now I'm going to overlap a picture here and show you how full some of my uh, cell cups are of royal jelly. And you can see what I mean about how much is in the cup and how many nurse bees you're going to need to get to that level. Now it's kind of funny, you know, I was going back through my pictures to see uh, when I start queen rearing on an average and, and every, single, um, every single year that I started grafting I noticed that the pictures grouped together with my grafting pictures there was morel mushrooms. So that tells me that I must, uh, evidently, um, start queen rearing about the same time morel mushrooms are popping up. Um, at that time, you've got dogwood starting to bloom. You've got honeysuckle in bloom. The maple trees have been in bloom at that point. They're starting to bust open big time at this time of the year. Um, so if that helps with your timing, by all means, use it. Watch for the dogwoods to bloom. Watch for the uh, honeysuckle to start pushing out uh, blooms. Um, the morel mushrooms, that seems to be a big thing for me. So, morel mushrooms and queen cells, you can't beat it. I mean, how can it get any better than that, folks? So, what I'll do after uh, 
after I get my cells started in the cell starter um, and I make up my mind, am I going to finish them in the cell starter? Am I going to transfer them to the finisher? Now, early in the spring, that can be automatically determined by the weather. Let's say you make up the cell starter and you're planning to use the cell finisher after the first two days in the cell starter. You're going to transfer everything back to the finisher and you're going to let them finish the process. That is your plan. And then all of a sudden, the meteorologist comes on and says, the weather changed. we got a snowstorm coming in. Well, <laughs> guess what? You're not transferring your cells back to the finisher. You're going to have to keep them in the cell starter. So, you know, sometimes the weather does predict um, what you're going to do or change the plans that you had. So that's something to, uh, to keep in mind. You may have to resort to using your cell starter. And then on your next batch, maybe you can incorporate using the cell finisher. So that's something to think about there. Now, one tip I'd give you to start off in spring um, for your queen rearing is don't expect to get full frames of queens your first batch early in the year. The weather's just too unpredictable and it's hard for the bees to cover all themselves and to keep them from chilling. So start small. Space your cell cups far apart like, for instance, take a look at this frame. On this frame, you can see I've got the cells spaced far apart. Um, I didn't necessarily get all of them to accept, but I'm happy with what I got. Um, it's better than to not have any at all, correct? As the year progresses and it gets a little warmer, then you start to put your uh, cell cups closer together. The bees with the warmer weather are able to keep them all warm and therefore acceptance isn't a problem as long as you didn't roll the larva. And a lot of people don't realize that but when you take that larva and you scoop it up with your grafting tool and you transfer it over to a cell cup that larva the way it was facing up um, has to go in the cell cup with the same side facing up and the reason for that is the larvas have a vent, a breathing vent, on the side of their neck. And the one on the bottom, laying in the royal jelly, is closed so they don't drown. So if you accidentally pick up that larva, transfer it over to the cup, and flip it over, the vent that's closed is now up, can't breathe. The one on the bottom is now in royal jelly. So therefore, you've just suffocated that larva. So it's very very uh, tedious um, to scoop up that larva and transfer it over without flipping it over. And maybe I shouldn't say tedious because with practice it does get very easy to do but at first it can be very hectic and uh, hard to get the grip of really. Um, I know I struggled for a long time scooping the larva and transferring it over but with practice anything is possible folks. Just keep after it, and hey, if if one grafting tool isn't working for you, try something different. I've seen people graft with a blade of grass and make it look super easy, but when I try it with a blade of grass, it's not so easy. I like the Chinese grafting tool myself. It does rather well. The JZBZ grafting tool, it works really well. Um, there's a lot of different grafting tools on the market. There's even uh, a grafting tool that cost I think 50 bucks. Never used it, but it is on the market. Um, I don't know what's so special about it, but it is an option. So if you have any questions on anything I've talked about today, um, feel free to leave them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you're thinking about queen rearing, I welcome you to check out that queen rearing series I made. Um, like I said, I think I've broke it down to where it's really easy to understand. And if you've watched very many videos on YouTube on how-tos, I've noticed that a lot of the how-to videos leave out steps and you either end up with extra parts or extra screws. How does that happen? Well, I tried to make it so that this video series didn't miss out on anything everything is there that you need to know and if there's something that's not there you can go down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it so 
Um, there you go, folks. Hope that's helpful for you. I wonder where Ladybug is. Maybe I'll go looking for her. See if she's all right. Well, I guess she won't be joining us today. She's in sleepy land, dreamland. Oh well, we tried to include her. I tried to share her with you today, folks. She's just too sleepy. Um, hope you all have a good week. If you have any questions or comments, like I said, leave them down below. If you enjoyed this video, slam that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe if you have not. Um, if you're a new subscriber, click on that bell so you can be notified when I release new videos. And we'll see you next Sunday at 7 a.m. Have a great week and uh, happy beekeeping.